I've always found it fascinating how Google is able to index millions of websites allowing anyone to literally type in a query and find exactly what they're looking for in seconds. So here's the story of how I made a search engine that would link up a query to the perfect website with no help whatsoever. There's a lot of moving parts to a search engine, indexing, web scraping, SEO, to all of which I ignored implementing my own better solution instead. I started out by building the server side. 13 minutes in and I was already questioning my decision to use JavaScript. It's taking, it's taking so long. I don't get it. I don't get why Node does this. Why can't it just download it from the internet like a normal package manager? Like even, 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 even Pip is better than this. I hate to admit it. I created some sample pages for my search engine to try and match with. My solution was questionable. The first step was to get the keywords. I would extract every word from the page text and count how many times it occurs. Any word with more than one occurrence would be remembered for when the user makes a query. Each keyword would also hold a priority. If it is included in the page title or description, then the priority is bumped up to high. When a query is made, the search engine then calculates a match score out of 100 based on the keywords in the search and the keywords on the page. Of course, the higher priorities would add a higher number to the match score. The system is clearly flawed. Okay, so in our first file, it's getting the keywords from this file. So for example, if I was to add the word hamburger and I just put it everywhere, then this is going to get selected out of the file. So we restart this. Hamburger is selected because it's used many times, but if you only use the word cat once, it doesn't get picked up because it hasn't been used enough. The next issue I encountered was that plurals were not taken into account. For example, kitten may not match with a site named kittens. My first idea was to manually append the ending to every noun, which included using a dictionary API. For obvious reasons, this wasn't so performant. And so I went on a long endeavor to find a downloadable dictionary that I could use to pass into my program. At the time, I couldn't find anything, so after being amused by a funny word, I moved to the next solution. This solution was storing every plural into the database over time. I instantly realized this was a stupid idea and found some random CSV file on the internet that I spent ages trying to pass. That took so long, but we finally have an object that contains the plurals of every single word in the dictionary. <sighs> okay, now we need to actually save them. Okay, so finally, finally this works. So, this took way longer than it should have, but if we see this file here, we'll see that the word countries is used, but the word country isn't. So obviously if we search countries, it comes up, but if we search country, it also is recognized because we recognize that it's a plural and then we just convert it backwards. So this works pretty efficiently now, but this did take a very long time and all of this code here. Now it was time to begin downloading thousands of websites from the internet and passing them. I don't see how this could possibly go wrong. I found a file containing 1 million of the most visited domains. This would allow me to prioritize results based on visits. The most common method of web scraping was to fetch a website, grab all the links from the page, and then scrape those websites recursively. I, c I cannot believe that just happened. I cannot believe I've just spent like half an hour debugging it because I imported the wrong function. That is actually insane. <laughs> After getting some basic web scraping working and abolishing my internet, I looked into how I could scrape these websites without getting banned from the web. So I grabbed a VPN that would automatically change my IP every 5 minutes. Once roughly 3000 sites were scraped, I was met by a heap allocation error in JavaScript. I figured this was a problem with the amount of times I was making requests at once. With my naive understanding of JavaScript promises, I tried to create a queue that would run the functions one at a time. This of course didn't work. It was a dumb solution. Then I figured that this was a completely wrong assumption and it was actually due to the infinite amount of times I was recursively calling a function. I tried workers, which didn't go well. Back to queuing for some reason. Fetch, fake user agent, visible confusion. And finally, I resorted to what I feared most, Stack Overflow.
While looking for a song for the intro of this video, I was interrupted by a reply from Caps. Apparently loading a 1 million line file straight into my program wasn't the best idea, so I decided to manually load one chunk of the file at a time. Thanks, cats. After implementing this, my program started to scan each site without crashing. This was great, the breakthrough I'd been waiting for. Finally, I was able to- Oh. Never mind. After some great debugging strategies, I figured out what was causing my program to crash every time I booted it. But this didn't stop it from crashing after a short period of time. I soon discovered a bug in Node.js, which was a new experience. Uh, so I think I actually broke Node, because if I add this URL string here before this string, and we run it, uh, for some reason it adds the a random like string from the URLs to the end of this string, which makes absolutely no sense. I had to tell the JavaScript god himself, Dylan. Uh, okay, let me show you. This is really interesting, and I, I think it's to do with memory and read stream. So I'm not gonna try and explain this whole thing, but what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> you see my point now. <laughs> That is a bug. Uh, I had this really weird thing that every site I tried to request would give me like an an error. Most of these websites are protected by Cloudflare, so these sites probably have bot fighting mode on. That, so that there is literally no work around. That sucks. Well, thank God I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> sure. With this bombshell, my last hope was to try making requests of Puppeteer which crashed my PC. I think the most important lesson that I've learned from this project is not to do anything in JavaScript. JavaScript is inconvenient and useless. In fact, I'm never gonna touch JavaScript again.